Tank destroyers are a special type of vehicle, and they come in many shapes and sizes. Every player can find a TD that suits their taste. Whether they prefer high damage per shot or convenient gun handling, excellent maneuverability or decent armor. But why choose between them? Meet our ambitious and determined debutantes, tank destroyers straight from Japan. This branch of the Japanese TDs starts at Tier 5. The first vehicle is the Honey 3. This TD was first developed in 1944. It was based on the chassis of the Type 97 Chiha tank with a closed cabin and 75mm gun mounted to the vehicle. 31 vehicles left the production line. However, these tank destroyers never saw combat. The main features of the Honey 3 are its small size and good concealment. You shouldn't try blocking damage in this vehicle, as its cabin and hull can be penetrated by most high-explosive shells. However, the Honey 3 does have an accurate and quick-firing gun, and it's ready to unlock its full potential so long as you stay out of trouble. Occupy a convenient bush and keep the opponents under heavy fire. You've got the penetration values and DPM for it. The next vehicle in the branch begins to reveal the nation's characteristic features. The Type 95 Giro is a large tank destroyer with good maneuverability and decent mobility. But don't rely on its armor, even if it is offset by a top-end 105mm gun. With good damage per shot and great gun handling, this TD definitely has its advantages. But no one will be surprised to see a gun of this caliber at Tier 6. What may interest you is a certain feature that's common to all Japanese tank destroyers. Armor-piercing shells used as both standard and special ammunition. AP shells have the highest normalization among all shell types. This means, all else being equal, it will be easier to penetrate tanks with sloped armor. Tier 7 is occupied by the Cheeto SP. Finally, here's where we get a vehicle with some armor, but only in the frontal projection. This TD has mediocre speed and excellent maneuverability. Its main task on the battlefield is heavy tank support. This is where the 105mm gun comes in. Thanks to its high penetration values, you won't need to aim too closely at other Tier 7 vehicles' weak spots. But be realistic, you won't penetrate the T-29's mantlet, even with a special shell. The Tier 8 vehicle continues the proud traditions of its predecessor, but comes with a little something extra. The Ho Re 2 features a strong upper glacis and frontal cabin armor. Its weak spots are its lower glacis, sides, and commander's cupola. Its speed leaves much to be desired, but maneuverability doesn't disappoint, nor does its gun. It has good damage per shot and penetration, as well as decent accuracy. But at this size, you won't unlock the vehicle's remarkable potential from behind the bushes. Even the fans of careful gameplay will get the sixth sense notification quite frequently. As you reach the crown of the Japanese TD branch, the vehicle's strengths are even more prominent. The Ho Re 1 at Tier 9 has a big gun with good damage per shot and a huge silhouette. The reliable frontal armor of the cabin is offset by a weak lower glacis and mediocre hull side armor. Although it can't compete with most same-tier TDs in speed, it does have decent mobility, which cannot be said about its concealment. Ambush tactics just won't work with such stealth parameters. As with the two previous vehicles, the main job of the Ho Re 1 is to actively support heavy tanks in battle. And finally, we present the last Japanese TD, the enormous Ho Re 3. The first thing that will catch your eye is its huge, high caliber naval gun. You might think it has the same parameters as the Object 268's gun, but there's one nuance. Remember those special AP shells? These shells can be a very nasty surprise for an opponent. And if the enemy decides to snap back, the vehicle's strong armor is sure to come in handy 
with its monolithic cabin and upper glacis sloped at an incredible angle. Its weak spots are its lower glacis and sides, as usual. This vehicle performs best when teamed up with a heavy tank. But nothing prevents you from playing effectively on your own. Just roll out from behind cover, fire, and then roll back. The vehicle's maneuverability and reverse speed are quite good. Just don't sit in the bushes for too long. Otherwise, your vehicle will meet a predictable end. All in all, the Japanese tank destroyers are heavy and dangerous vehicles with very clear strengths. And you don't need special vehicle handling skills to unleash their potential. It's simple. Don't expose your weak spots. Support your allies and shoot down careless opponents. Follow this advice and you're well on your way to a hard-earned victory.